Margaret Alice Murray, 13th of July 1863 to 13th of November 1963. Yes, she lived over a hundred years. I was an Anglo-Indian Egyptologist, archaeologist, anthropologist, historian and folklorist. Her early life was spent in Calcutta and this certainly influenced her throughout her life and is believed to have been important to her work. She became a nurse at the Calcutta General Hospital, which was run by the sisters of the Anglican Sisterhood of Cloa, and worked to deal with a cholera outbreak. In 1887 she returned to England, where she took up employment as a social worker, dealing with the underprivileged. When her father retired, she moved into his house in Bushy Heath, Hertfordshire, living with him until his death in 1891. In 1893, she, she travelled to Madras, where her sister had moved to with her new husband. At the age of 30, Murray decided to enrol at the newly opened Department of Egyptology at University College London, or UCL, in Bloomsbury, run by Sir William Finders Petrie. Now, to my Australian listeners, it is he is broadly speaking from the start. It's a complicated story, but yeah, he is connected to Matthew Flinders, uh, who gave his name to the Flinders Range. Margaret took courses in ancient Egyptian and Coptic languages, which were taught by Francis Llewellyn Griffiths and Walter Ewing Crum. In 1898, she was appointed to the position of junior lecturer responsible for teaching the linguistic courses at the Egyptology department. She was therefore the first female lecturer in archaeology in the United Kingdom. And over her life, she actually rose to become an assistant professor, uh, but not a professor, as some have claimed. Uh, Petrie established connections with the Egyptology department of Manchester Museum, where many of his finds had been housed, housed Murray thus travelled to the museum to catalogue the artefacts and during 1906-7 regularly lectured there. Murray took an active role in the feminist movement joining the suffragettes, the Women's Social and Political Union, taking part in feminist demonstrations, protests and marches. After being ill, she, t- she went to recuperate, uh, taken ill, she went to recuperate in Glastonbury, Somerset, and became interested in Glastonbury Abbey and the folklore surrounding it, connecting it to the legendary figure of King Arthur and to the idea that the Holy Grail had been brought there by Joseph of Arimathea. She wrote about the Egyptian connections to the Holy Grail and in doing so moved deeper into the study of myths and legends. His interest in folklore led her to develop an interest in the witch trials of early modern Europe. In 1917, she published a paper in Folklore, the Journal of the Folklore Society, in which she articulated the view that the witches persecuted in European history were actually followers of divine religion with beliefs, ritual and organisation as highly developed as any cult in the end. Murray joined the Folklore Society in February 1927 and was elected the Society's Council a month later, although she stood down in 1929. Uh, But in 1953, Murray was appointed to the presidency of the Folklore Society. Uh, During her excavations in Malta, she had taken an interest in the island's folklore, resulting in the 1932 publication of her Maltese folk tales. A largely a translation of her earlier stories translated and collected uh, by Manuel Magri and her friend Lisa Galli. <music> this time there was no academic tradition for the study of witchcraft, although the notion of a witchcraft cult had been around for over a hundred years. Uh, Murray was really, uh, really the first feminist to study the witch trials. In the witch cults of Europe, of Western Europe, 1921, 
Murray made a distinction between operative witchcraft, which referred to the performance of charms and spells with a purpose, and ritual witchcraft, by which he meant the ancient religion of Western Europe, a fertility-based faith that she also termed the Dianic cult. She claimed the cult had probably once been devoted to the worship of both a male deity and a mother goddess, uh, but the male deity appears to have been superseded to have superseded that of the female once recorded. Uh, Murray claimed that the figure referred to as the Z devil in the trial accounts was the witch's god to whom the witches offered their prayers. The horned god represented the cycle of seasons and harvests. It's believed that he died and periodically returned to life. Uh, that at the witches' meetings the god would be personified, usually by a man or at times a woman or even an animal. Uh, when the human personified this entity, Mori claimed that they were usually dressed plainly, though they appeared in full costume for the witches' sabbaths. Uh, members joined the cult through admission ceremonies. Applicants had to agree to join at their own free will and agree to devote themselves to the service of their deity. She also claimed that in some cases these individuals had to sign a covenant or were baptised into the faith. Uh, that the religion was largely passed down along her hereditary lines. Uh, Murray described the religion as being divided into covens containing 13 members led by a coven officer who was termed the devil in the trial accounts, uh, but whom was accountable to a grand master. According to Murray, the records of the coven were kept in a secret book, with the coven also disciplining its members, even executing those deemed traitors. Describing this wet witch cult as a joyous religion, she claimed that there were two primary festivals celebrated on May Eve and November Eve, although the other dates of observance were the winter and summer solstices and Easter. She asserted that the general meeting of all members of the religion were known as Sabbaths, while the more private meetings were known as Esbats. The Esbats were nocturnal rites, which began at midnight and were primarily for business, whereas the Sabbaths were purely religious. Uh, the Sabbath seminaries involved the witch paying homage to a deity, renewing their vows of fidelity and obedience to him, and providing him with, all, with accounts of all the magical actions that they had conducted since the previous Sabbath. Once this business had finished, admissions to the cult or marriages were conducted. Ceremonies and fertility rites took place, and then the Sabbath ended with feasting and dancing. Uh, these magical rites were performed both for malevolence and benevolence. Deeming ritual witchcraft to be a fertility cult, Murray suggested that many of its rites were designed to ensure fertility in rainmaking. She claimed that there were four types of sacrifice performed by the witches. A blood sacrifice in which the neophyte writes their name in blood. The sacrifice of animals, the sacrifice of a non-Christian child to procure magical powers and the sacrifice of witches god by fire to ensure fertility. Uh, she interpreted accounts of witches shapeshifting into various animals as being representative of a rite in which the witches dressed as specific animals which they took to be sacred. She asserted that accounts of familiars were based on witches use of animals which she divided into divine in familiars used in divination and domestic familiars used in other magic rites. And Murray suggested that a pre-Christian fertility-based religion had survived the Christianisation of Britain, although it was only practised in certain places and within certain communities. Indeed, dressing as animals may, be a fertility, may have been a fertility rite for animals, whereas dressing in human costume would have been a human fertility rite. She alleged that Thomas a. Beckett, Joan of Arc, Gilles de Ray uh, were members of these witch cults. She also mentions the preservation of this ancient religion was entrusted to a variety of indigenous people who were small in stature and were driven out from their land with each new invasion, 
but who continued to live on the island up until the early modern period. And that this would explain stories about fairies, gnomes and other small people. Uh, these creatures were very shy, but were, were able to pass the knowledge of their religion to ordinary people. Uh, the witches were their pupils and thus heirs to the ancient religion. In The God of the Witches, 1931, repeatedly referring to the witch cult as the old religion. In this book she also edited many of the claims made in her previous volume, such as those which discussed um, S bleep X and the sacrifice of animals and children. She began to refer to the witch's deity as the horned god and asserted that it was an entity that had been worshipped in Europe since pa the Paleolithic period. In the Bronze Age, the worship of the deity could be found throughout Europe, Asia and parts of Africa, claiming that the depictions of the various horned figures from these societies prove that. Amongst other evidence cited, she, she was the horned figures found in Maheno Daro, the deities Oris, o, 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 Osiris and Ammon in Egypt and the Minotaur of the Minoan, Crete. Within continental Europe she claimed that the horned god was represented by Pan in Greece, uh, by Pan in Greece, Sanuoas in Gaul and various Scandinavian rock carvings, claiming the divinity had been declared by the, dev the devil by the Christian authorities. She claimed that the worship continued up until the modern period, citing folklore traditions such as the Dorset Usa and the Puck Fair in County Kerry, Ireland, and Mother Ludlum's Cauldron in French and Surrey. In Divine King of England, 1954, she greatly extended on her theory. In, influenced by Fraser's The Golden Broth, uh, uh, Bow, an anthropological book that made the claim that societies all over the world sacrificed their kings to the deities of nature. She claimed that this practice was continued into medieval England. For example, the death of William II or William Rufus was really a ritual sacrifice. Uh, she also wrote the article Witchcraft for the 14th edition of the Encyclopedia Britannica, which was published in 1929 and remained largely unchanged in subsequent editions until 1969. Uh, this was perhaps the main reason why Murray's views and the concept of the witch cult had such a massive impact on the popular perception of the witch cult and indeed on the development of witchcraft. <music> Murray's witch cult theories greatly influenced Jill Gardner providing a blueprint for contemporary pagan religion of Wicca, with Mari Reen referred to as the grandmother of Wicca. Uh, Jacqueline Simpson, 1994, in Folklore, wrote that her descriptions of alleged rituals, festivals and organisations of witches were used by Gerald Gardner as a blueprint for setting up a new system of magical and religious rituals. The Wicca movement of Britain and America, now the most widespread and best-known branch of neo-paganism. She believed she was rediscovering forgotten facts of history. She never dreamed her work would be used to train a new generations in the belief and practices of magic. Although it is said that Gerald Gardner and Doreen Valiente actually hinted that, she, that uh, Murray had been a witch herself. A Wicca's theological structure revolving around the horned god and the mother goddess was adopted from Murray's ideas about the ancient witch cult. Wicca groups were named covens and their meetings termed esbats, both words that Murray had popularised. Wicca's practitioners enter via an initiation ceremony. Murray claimed that witches wrote down their spells in a book and may be seen as an influence on the Wicca's Book of Shadows. A Wicca's early system of seasonal festivities were also based on Murray's framework. 
Uh, whilst many wickers no longer believe this discredited notion, uh, they some do feel a kinship with those historically accused of witchcraft. Uh, paraphrasing and almost certainly misrepresenting Dr. Angela Poocher from Angela's Symposium, uh, does it matter that the pagan religion of Wicca uh, does not have an ancient or does not have ancient origins? And many in the West are followers, and by all accounts, it's the world's fastest growing religion. If people get something from it, what's the harm? Given her academic standing, Murray's work was initially well received by many academics. Nevertheless, Murray's theories have never really received support from experts in the early modern witch trials. And from her early publications onwards, many of her ideas were challenged by those who highlighted her factual errors and methodological failings. Certainly following her death in 1963, her theories came under increasing academic scrutiny, so that by the 1990s, new historical evidence and diverse Scholarship in pagan studies meant that her work was almost entirely discredited. Professor Ronald Hutton has argued the witch cult in Western Europe was based on a small amount of archival research and extensive use of printed trial records in the 19th century editions, plus early modern pamphlets and works on demonology. Jeffrey B. Russell and Brooks Alexander, 2007, in a history of witchcraft, sorcerers, heretics and pagans wrote uh, that this old religion persisted secretly without leaving any evidence is of course possible, uh, just as it may be possible that below the surface of the moon lie extensive deposits of stilton cheese. Anything is possible, but it's nonsense to assert the existence of something for which no evidence exists. Uh, the Moriites ask us to swallow the most peculiar sandwich, a large piece of wrong evidence between two thick slices of no evidence at all. However, from the 1960s, Carlo Ginsberg documented the beliefs of a number of early modern groups of sorcerers, seers and healers. He claimed they were rooted in a pre-Christian paganism and credited Murray with a correct intuition in identifying the remnants of a pre-Christian religion of Diana and in believing that the witch child testimonies did at times represent actual or perceived experiences. In 2002, Sabina Magliocchio postulated a middle way between Hutton's idea and the pre-Christian elements in witchcraft were only legends and Murray's ideas that there was an organised pagan witch's society. Furthermore, I do firmly believe that my own Kajawan beliefs can be traced back to at least the Majapahit Empire, despite some suggesting that its origins are within theosophy, which was popular amongst the Dutch colonists. Uh, these are a syncretism of the older Hindu-Buddhist beliefs within Islam. Kajawan is indeed somewhat exclusive to remoter parts of Java and certain families, and it is passed down along hereditary lines. Kajawan does include magical and mystical elements. I believe these to be derived from Shaivism, but an older animistic tradition is also in evidence. Uh, there is evidence that this, this has been and is being suppressed by more mainstream Islam. Furthermore, that the pers persecution of its followers by the state has been used for political ends. I have to say that before researching this, I had a sneak in admiration for Margaret Murray. Like myself, she'd been an academic and something of a maverick. She worked at Manchester Museum, which I love deeply, although I've not been since it's, uh, since it's been done up. She was a suffragette. Uh, yes, I was aware of some co controversy, but like most people, I somewhat bought into a feminist analysis of the witch trials. Uh, yes, they were victims of a satanic panic initiated by the church and readily adopted by patriarchal societies, uh, but her uncritical acceptance of contemporary accounts only adds to the misjustice. 
Indeed, throughout the 18th and 19th centuries, the common beliefs amongst educated sectors of the European populace was that there had never been any genuine cult of witches and that all those persecuted and executed had been innocent of the crime. I knew that she had influenced Gerald Gardner, whom I have called a lovable rogue, and always suspected that he had taken her work and shaped it for his own purpose. This no longer seems to be the best interpretation, although I've just listened to a vlog which somewhat un unconvincingly claims exactly this. Uh, thus, I must regrettably conclude with a quote from Jacqueline Simpson, 1994, in Folklore. And no British folklorist can remember Dr Margaret Murray without embarrassment and a sense of paradox. She is one of the few folklorists whose name became widely known to the public, but amongst scholars her reputation is deservedly low. A theory that witches are members of a huge secret society preserving a prehistoric fertility cult through the centuries is now seen as based on deeply flawed methods and illogical arguments. Uh, the fact that in her old age, and that after three increasingly eccentric books, she was made president of the Folklore Society, must certainly have harmed the reputation of the society, and possibly the status of folklorists in this country. <laughs>